Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Magda and today we're going to talk about what contributed in getting my traineeship at European Investment Bank. So let's get started. So as you may know or not, two years ago I've been admitted as a trainee at European Investment Bank in Luxembourg. I spent there five months as a trainee and many of you ask how? How is it possible you got there? Because it's not easy and it's not only to get it at EAB or any other European institution, but also normal jobs. All this stuff that I said did apply to my jobs later that I got. So yeah, let's start with first point, which is going to be CE. So I prepared my CE wisely. I did write the stuff that I did all over my time since basically I finished high school. What jobs, what university, student organizations, what did I do? So everything quite in detail, remembering about the keywords, looking at the um, job posts and trying to, you know, match my CV with the post. Of course, based on truth, but many of, like usually when you apply for something, you do it because of your interest, you do it because you did something towards it already. So first of all, a CV that was chosen, which sounds difficult, I know, but that's already a big step when you, your CV is going to be chosen. That's already a big step forward. Then, back then, I assume it's the same right now, you were admitted to the online pre-recorded interview, which is basically an interview where you have around three to five questions, which you have to answer between one to three minutes. You record yourself, the question is written down, and you have to record your answer on the questions. But it's not that straightforward. These interviews can be very, very stressful. And it's normal that you stress to record yourself, be sure that you're going to check out online how it works, you're gonna, you're gonna have an opportunity to do the test uh, recording, so be prepared that you're gonna test yourself and record yourself, be sure that you're gonna be looking professionally from your clothing and from what is behind you, so don't have mess or stuff behind you, don't be in a sweatshirt, just be looking quite professionally, because they're gonna also judge you, you have to do the good first impression. Be smiley, be confident. I know you're going to be stressed. I know we all are, but at least try to do it properly the way it should be, at least to make you look professional and that you're responsible and that you are worth this job or at least to give you a chance to get the interview. Sometimes, but I think it's not a case for EIB, you could re-record the answers. So if you messed up, you can re-record. From my experience, usually the re-recordings were worse than the first ones and you cannot really go back to the first one. So it's uh, always a uh, lottery how it's going to be. And of course, be very sure that if you don't know the answer, because it might happen, don't stress out, say what you think it is, but say, I am not sure, but I think it's this and this. However, if it's not true, I'm more than happy to learn what is it. So you show your interest in learning. Of course, if that's every single question, that's not going to work. But if it's one out of three, one out of five, maybe it's going to be okay. Uh, you just say what you think. You just say that you're willing to learn because you are not sure if this is the proper answer. And be aware that these are normal people who are looking. These are the people who also have done the interviews. They know that it cannot be a perfect interview. And also, trust me, you're going to have a lot of people who come super unprepared. So if you already prepared more than other people, you're going to be chosen probably for the interview. Next point, if you got the interview, again, be prepared. First thing that you can prepare yourself is answer the question. Tell me about yourself, run me through your CV. Tell me a little bit about this or that, yeah, like your education or your previous work experience. Be sure you know how to answer these questions. It is a time that you can do kind of a monologue for like something between one to three minutes. I'm usually going super around and it's getting messy at some point. But when I was super, super focused on getting a job, I was always prepared. I would prepare for the few days before the interview, kind of making up the speech, knowing it by heart, making myself notes being sure that I'm going to say what is important for me. The job that I get at EAB was focused on preparing the application. So in other company, I was getting the application for the software, you know, in a, in a company. We were doing mapping, we were doing some automations, and that was a very important part that you could see in the job post. Ah, also very important part, save the job post. Because if sometimes when the deadline is gone, they delete the job post from the internet and you have no access anymore to the job post and you're not going to be even able to properly prepare for the interview. Because preparing for an interview should be based on the job post. So when you're looking at a job post, they are very much talking about, for example, automation, as it was my case, highlight in your experience automation and anything that could be connected to it. So for me, automation is not only what I did at work, where I was doing pure automation, but also knowing SQL that I've learned during the, my bachelor studies, the same knowledge of Excel, VBAs, R programming, or any type of coding. For me, this goes to automation. That shows you, you have this mind of being capable of thinking and coding, which 
might be something that might be better than the other people who got it. So highlight the things, be sure that you don't have just a speech for every single interview the same. So the same with the CV, don't have every single CV the same. Be prepared for highlighting what is important for that job position. Or what is also important for you, if you think you have a big achievement, so for example, you prepared some event, or uh, your thesis got awarded with something, maybe don't purely say my thesis got awarded, but say my thesis was about this and this, it was a very interesting topic, blah, 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 and in the end it was rewarded with the best thesis award of the year, something like this, that's gonna give you another heads up from someone else. Or if it's something more connected to your interest, just be sure that you're going to get out a little bit of the university, not just study, study, study. Which brings us to the next point. Your interview will go as good as what you did for the past few years. Unfortunately, this is the truth. If you did only studies, you're going to be just a person who studied. If you did studies, worked, had student organizations, volunteered or did anything outside of university, you're already better than the person who just studied. Unless they just studied and they have super knowledge and you have zero knowledge because you are doing everything outside of university, then it's a different story. But if it's possible for you to go to the university and do something outside, match it, show it. Even if it can be something that you might think it's not connected. So for example, you worked at the bar or in a restaurant to make money for your rent, totally not connected to what, what you studied with because for example, you studied finance, show them this is you being able to, to organize, to manage your time, to work under pressure. That shows many, many things that are very well at work. Another thing that I really want to highlight is relax. Think of them as normal people. They are there to judge you, yes, but don't think about it. Think about you speaking with someone who is the same level as you. You speaking with someone who's going to be your colleague. Already imagine it being with someone who already hired you. You're fine. You're just talking with them. You're showing your knowledge. You have the knowledge. You know what you're going to do. So be confident. Be relaxed. They're going to try to probably relax you at the beginning of the conversation. For me, Honestly, the moment I start to answer the question, tell me about yourself, first 30 seconds, maybe one minute, I'm like all over the place. And then I'm like, okay, like focus. You're on an interview, do it, do it well. And it goes, all the stress is gone. Of course, if there is a question that I don't know the answer, again, on the interview, do the same what you did on a pre-recorded interview. I am not sure. I think it's this, or I think it's connected to this, but I'm more than happy to learn about it. Could you please tell me, because now you can ask them a question, could you please tell me what is it? And then of course you say, oh, thank you so much, and all that stuff. So you also learn something from the interview. Also at the end of the interview, you can highlight, thank you, I'm happy I learned something new today. So that's also very important. Another very important part is, please ask questions. People love to be asked questions, either about job, about person, like not personal life, but I mean about their achievement at work. Just ask questions. They always will ask you in the end, do you have any questions? Ask them. If during the interview you want to ask the questions, it's also, in my opinion, very good to do so because it just shows that you're interested. Interested in a job. So it's a very big point. Trust me, many people come and they are so stressed that they cannot even show their interest and they are just misunderstood. They can have all the knowledge and super good CV, but they're just frozen, don't know what to do. And yeah, as I said, practice, practice, practice. Also, another thing is practice the questions that are on the internet. So what do you want to do in five years? Your strengths and weaknesses. Where do you see yourself? All these questions, typical questions, they still pop up on the interviews. Use the STAR method, use the proper way to answer them. Prepare yourself, speak to yourself. If you have someone who can interview you, who can answer, who you can answer the questions to, go for it. If you have nobody, you just speak to yourself in your room. It's fine. Nobody will judge you and, and if they do you're the one who's preparing for the interview so it's fine so yeah and last but not least stable connection be sure that you have a good camera in a way it's clean uh, that you have a clear sound so i don't know maybe use the headphones that you have a good connection so you're not gonna drop out that you are as i said clear background not clear but in a way you know clean that you don't have stuff around you you look professional smile be friendly ask questions just try to have a normal conversation with them treat them as normal people and also, just to highlight it again, make a story out of it. Make a story how you you are perfect fit for their job. How your experience from the previous stuff makes you the best person to have that job. And they will believe it as well. So yeah, I hope it really helps you. That applies not only for EIB, but for EIB it works for me perfectly. Because there are really normal people. You as a trainee, you don't have an interview with HR. You have interview with your future colleagues or your bosses. So 
it makes it slightly easier in a way of, you know, they don't look at you from the HR point of view, but they look at you more from the knowledge and how you are as a person. Also, it's a traineeship, not a full-time job. So they also want someone who will be hardworking, but nice to be around. They're not going to be, you know, lazy or look like people who don't care. So trust me, you're going to do fine. <laughs> I know it. Either if it's EIB or any other job, but yeah, just the most important part is be prepared to come to the interview with knowing what is the job, what they want and what they may expect. Sometimes you might be surprised what questions they're going to ask. Sometimes it might be that what is in a post is different than what you're going to do and it's fine. But you prepare yourself for what is in a post and maybe you have other experience that will also fit the job. Uh, so yeah. That would be it for today. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think and if you enjoyed this video I'd be very happy if you'd hit the like button that helps me a lot with the YouTube algorithm so this video will reach more people and if you haven't subscribed subscribe to my channel. I talk a lot about traineeships, living, working abroad, studying as well so if you enjoyed this type of topics and you don't want to miss any of my future videos subscribe to my channel and here I leave you the video about application to European institutions and the European Institutions playlist. Thank you for watching, have a nice day and I'll see you in another video.